Hi, I'm your host, Vasco Duarte. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Success Thursday this week with Lucia Alarcón. Hi, Lucia. Welcome back. Hi, everyone. So, Lucia, on Thursdays, we talk success. But before we dive into that, we do want to know, what's your favorite retrospective format and why? Great. I love retrospectives. I always try all formats and all things that um, I discover and find. But I always come back to Lean Coffee to use it for retrospective. Uh, Retrospective is one of my favorite formats. It's just very simple, but it's very powerful. I like how Lean Coffee helps people to actually get into the mindset of, let's do a bit of a deep dive on a specific subject and let's troubleshoot and brainstorm about this specific subject. Sometimes when you do other formats, the face of gathering information can get a bit big and can disperse the discussions a bit too much. So you feel like you touch base on a lot of subjects, but you don't go deep enough in any. So what Lean Coffee provides, in my opinion, is the opportunity to open the floor for people to actually choose things to discuss with a little bit more of focus on depth. So that's why I like it. And it works really well when you mix it up with different retrospectives over time. Absolutely. And uh, I'll put the link in the show notes for the Lean Coffee format. I mean, there's a lot of examples also here on the podcast uh, that you can hear. And uh, uh, a very common thread in people that like the Lean Coffee is exactly this ability to focus the conversation for the team. Yeah, yeah. And I've also tried the other formats. Um, There's a retrospective that uses the format of Cards Against Humanity. So that's a really fun one to use. So I like to mix up some fun ones as well with impro games and stuff as well when when possible, just to keep it varied for the team. Absolutely. I'll put the link to the Cards Against Agility. We've had one guest on the podcast also share that. I think it's a great example. There's some cards out there that you can download and, and use to play that game. Awesome. Lucia, so after the retro, of course, we want to succeed. That's why we do the retros in the first place. And uh, understanding that success for Scrum Masters is not just a personal success, we still want to measure it and understand it. So share with us, Lucia, what does success mean for you as a Scrum Master? So on a personal level for my approach to working who I am and me as a Scrum Master, success for me is um, team health and seeing my team members collaborate and communicate, uh, seeing my team members feeling comfortable with experimenting, feeling open to experimenting, trying new things and feeling comfortable around failure or challenges or things don't go quite well and the transparency as well. So when I see, you know, like day-to-day demonstrations of these things happening in a team, that's when I feel most uh, happy and proud of the work that uh, we do as Scrum Masters because back again to what I was commenting around um, my the beginning of my journey with waterfall, waterfall you know like I I really care about people's health and you know like scrum enables people to actually have a healthier workplace environment how do you measure that health I mean you've talked about being comfortable with experimenting and failure I imagine those are parts but when you look at the teams that you work with how do you actually define health what what are the things you're looking for So in general terms, you can always do team health monitors. So there's a lot of frameworks out there that you can implement and use them to bring it to the team and discuss together how people feel based on the different team health measures that are provided in many frameworks to measure team health. But what I like to do as well is I'd like to pair that up with a team charter or team values because that's part also of team health in terms of what are healthy behaviors 
and healthy values that we want to live up as a team. And then introduce that as part of our team health check in the sense of if we we believe that collaboration is a value that we want to, you know, like uphold in our team, how are we tracking with that value? And, you know, like over time, gather and discuss how we're tracking, are we still, you know, like uh, living up to this value? And even do we need to introduce a new one or discuss, refresh what it means to us and what be- behaviors we want to, what this, how this value translates to behaviors, right? And have that discussion. And how often do you come back to this? Because of course, uh, I imagine that, you know, a great place to to have that team health check and discussion might be the retrospect, but of course, we can't have all the retrospects about that. So uh, in your experience, what's a good rule of thumb of how often we should come back and check the team health? I guess it would depend a lot in terms of, for example, if the team has retrospectives often, for example, the team that I am working with at the moment has several projects. So you might base out the team health check like once a month, for example, or if they have a lot of contact and context uh, and retros, perhaps you might want to space it a bit more even. Like, I don't know, once a quarter, that depends on how often and how many spaces of discussions and communications you have with your team and how you see your team progressing as well. I, I tend to try to see where the team is at in terms of their health, their journey, their maturity from agile perspective and tailor what we do based on that as well. Absolutely. And uh, I'll put the link on the show notes for some of these health check templates and ideas. But besides values and behaviors, are there things that you like to include in the conversation as you establish that health check with your teams? I think feedback is very important and feedback should happen at all levels, right? So I often talk about uh, constructed feedback and how to communicate, you know, like, and there's frameworks such as radical candor or clean language that can be used for feedback as well. So this is an important part of understanding and building towards uh, safety and team health, you know, being able to communicate when things are not quite constructive or positive, but in a way that helps the person to understand and do things differently next time, you know. So that's important to include in the conversation, in my opinion. Absolutely. Great tip. So thank you for sharing that, Lucia. No worries. Part of a successful Scrum Master job is to help the product owner. Tomorrow we explore that critical role in Scrum, the product owner role. Tune in to learn about product owner anti-patterns, what you can do to help the product owner, and a real-life example of what a great product owner is and what made it so. Tomorrow on our Friday product owner episode. See you tomorrow. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring.